Well, as I revealed earlier this afternoon, the Prime Minister and the Greens have come to a deal on the government's Housing Australia Future Fund, removing a double dissolution trigger and meaning that legislation will now pass the Senate. After pledging an extra $2 billion for housing in the wake of the legislation battle, the PM has provided another $1 billion for housing this year. The Greens say they'll continue to fight Labor on trying to get a rent freeze implemented. Joining me now at the desk is the Greens housing spokesman, Max chandler Mather. Max chandler Mather, thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. So... Take us through the deal. Mm -hmm. When was the deal hatched? Mm -hmm. Who spoke to whom? Yep. <laughs> All the gory detail. Well, look, at the start of this process, uh, nine months ago, there was not a single guaranteed dollar to be spent on public and community housing. And since the Greens have pushed, we have now secured $3 billion of immediate funding for public and community housing this year and locked in $500 million a year uh, and guaranteed that thereafter. That means that the Greens have secured more than six times what Labor originally proposed to spend on social uh, housing. Look, when did, get... the, when did the Prime Minister come to Adam Bant with this offer or how did it, how did it sort of work? Well, Mate. negotiations have been ongoing for months now. I'm not going to go into the exact details of those negotiations, but obviously they've been occurring uh, up until today and uh, that's the nature of those sort of negotiations. I think the important point to make... So this wasn't something that was... Uh, decided on a week or two ago before the PM went overseas and just announced today. Look, there again, were... I'm not going to go into the timing... Sounds like it was. To I'm not going to go into the timing of announcements, but, I mean, the bottom line here is the Greens have just secured six times what Labor proposed to spend originally on public and community housing. That's pretty remarkable. Our frustration, of course, is that we haven't been able to convince Labor to care about the one-third of this country who rents. I mean, the reality is Greens press a forced National Cabinet to even think and talk about national renters' rights and caps. They then had the power to freeze and cap rent increases, and they refused. And I think that the lesson they're going to have to learn now, from here and up until the next election, every time someone rents, someone's rent goes up, that's on the Prime Minister and the Labor Party. And we are going to remind everyone about that from now until the next okay, election. OK, so it's a win-win for you then. You could say you got extra money for social housing at the same time you can beat the government over the head over rental freezes. Well, this is about building pressure on the government to act. And look, yeah, I mean, I, frankly, I'm not happy about the fact that over the next few years we're going to have to keep bashing the Labor over the head on renters. Ideally, what uh, we'd like them to do is come to their senses and realise the one-third of this country who rents deserve to be treated like uh, citizens and with basic dignity and respect, including a freeze and cap on rent increases. What I am happy about is the $3 billion for public and community housing because that means thousands of families now will get a roof over their heads, thousands and thousands of families, because the Greens pushed and fought. Uh, and nine months ago, we wouldn't have had that $3 million. Now we have that $3 right. billion. How, how easy is this going to be to roll out? Is there any detail associated with this or just a figure? Because anyone trying to get a build at the moment will tell you there's a problem with labour, there's a problem with supply chains. Well, look, uh, first thing to say is the $2 billion is being spent through the Social Housing Accelerator, so that's being distributed to the states. The extra billion dollars is being spent directly by the federal government, by their housing body called the National Housing Finance Investment Corporation. What we know is there's actually a downturn in the private construction industry at the moment. So building private building approvals are down. That is freeing up construction materials, skills and labour. We could put to work building more public and community housing. And the reality is that in any given year, the private construction industry finishes about, constructs about 200,000 homes. Uh, that's an enormous amount of capacity, a proportion of which we could put to work building public and community housing. And that's what that $3 billion will do. So was any consideration given to saying they're not moving on rents, let's just hold the line? Look, we have said from the start, I think I've been on uh, Sky before, talking about the fact we're willing to negotiate in good faith. We are willing to be pragmatic. We are realistic about the fact that when you're pushing against a government who, look, to be perfectly frank, seem very close with the property industry, very close with the real estate industry, uh, pushing back on the influence that those industries wield over the Labor Party is going to take time. Uh, and we never thought we were going to solve the entire housing crisis. But look, Nine months ago, no one cared in, about renters uh, in the media or the political class. Now they are one of the key nat points of national discussion. That's a step forward. Nine months ago, the government didn't guarantee a single cent on public and community housing. Now we have $3 billion. 
Uh, that is a remarkable shift in just nine months' time. Uh, and I, I, what I would say to those renters out there who still are doing it tough and looking down the barrel of another rent increase is look what Greens Power has achieved over the last nine months. Imagine if we work together what we could achieve over the next few years. All right, just bear with me. I have one more question for you. We're just going to show you now. We're going to bring you these pictures now live from Government House in Canberra. The Prime Minister is arriving for the issue of the writ for the voice referendum by the Governor-General. This is part of the procedure that formally locks in the date and the question. Well, we know the date and the question, October 14. But I guess the big point about this historic moment is there's no turning back from this. You know, Peter Dutton was talking about, well, there's still time. There's still time to change the question. Um, uh, not anymore. They're about to issue the writ, so there you go. Max Chandler Mather from the Greens, a housing spokesman, joins me. This deal on the half the Housing Australia Future Fund the Greens have done, it's mm. pretty good timing, actually, for Anthony Albanese, isn't it? Because it looks like his voice referendum's in big trouble. The government's under pressure on not letting Qatar Airways, not letting more flights into Australia. You've kind of done them a favour, the government, haven't you? No, I wouldn't agree with that. I mean, what we have done is got $3 billion for people in desperate need of public and community housing. And frankly, uh, I would hope uh, that uh, it wouldn't take a bad day for the Prime Minister for, to get him to care about uh, the one third of this country who rents or more funding for public and community housing. Um, but look, the bottom line is that from the start, this has been about materially improving the lives of people who are in desperate housing stress at the moment. And uh, what we do know that um, part of the reason that for us this fight has only just begun, we continue, we're going to find other housing bills over the next few years if they come before Parliament and win the balance of power. You better believe that we're going to fight hard for a cap and freeze on rent increases. No, so not the end. No, absolutely. I would argue this is just the beginning. All right, just finally on the voice, is there anything more the government could have done to get this over the line in your view? Well, the referendum hasn't happened yet. There's still a chance that we can get it over the line. I think, look, the bottom line pitch for me is there's a lot of people out there right now who are pretty fed up with politics and feel like they're sick of their voices not being heard on the political stage. And this is an institution that would give ordinary First Nations people, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, a chance to go and speak truth to power. Now, that's not going to change everything overnight. But if we, if, if we can just get a few extra... Every day, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders in there telling politicians what's what. Um, I think that's a good thing. Uh, and uh, that's a good, practical, small step towards improving the lives of First Nations people. Now, that doesn't mean we get everything, but, my God, like, how often do we get a chance to have a good, practical step forward that opens up Parliament to ordinary people? And in this case, uh, uh, there's sort of hearing the voices of First Nations people who are usually completely locked out of the political process. Max Chan-Lamayla, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. Thanks for having me.